I'm Dr. Janine Krauss, and today I'm going to talk about the difference between regular milk and alternative milk. It's a common question that I get in my office pretty much once or twice a week. Should I go dairy-free? Well, what I usually tell my patients is it depends on how your body responds to dairy. So say you drink milk and you end up that you get a little gassy, a little bloated. Okay, can you live with that? Or say you drink milk and maybe you have some pretty extreme sinus congestion, you get stuffy, or you get this kind of drip going down the throat and you have to keep clearing your throat. You don't want to be the person at the office doing that. So maybe it might be worth it to switch over to an alternative milk. Now here's the thing with alternative milks. They have stabilizers, carrageenan, guar gum. These types of things can be irritating to a lot of people. And so you much rather want to look at how do you feel on these certain items? Here's the other thing. The most nutritive way to get in alternative milks is to make them yourself. The carton products that you find at the typical grocery stores, those are just watered down types of almond milk, coconut milk, flaxseed milk. That's why it's got 25, 30 calories in it because it's mostly water. So if you're going to make your milks, you want to do it at home on your own. So you want to use either whole almonds, you want to use cashews, things of that nature to make your nut milks. But then this could cause another issue. If you have a nut sensitivity, you definitely don't want to be making any nut milks. You could choose to try to do the seed milks. That's another option because you can make hemp milk. You can make sunflower seed milk. There are some great recipes out there and I'm actually going to have them posted on my website as well for you to review. So what do we really look at here in terms of milk versus alternative milk? What are we missing out on? Yes, we've been told by the Dairy Council there's a ton of calcium in milk and that's true. There's also fat, there's also protein, and there is some sugar in milk. And it's a great mix. It's a great option for a post-recovery drink, but a lot of people can't tolerate it. And so when I talk to my patients about going dairy-free, it really boils down to, does milk bother you? Do you have nasal congestion? Do you have a cough? Do you have eczema or psoriasis? Do you have acne? If you stop drinking milk and some of those things go away, you better bet that it's quite possible that you want to stay away from milk for a little while. It could be causing your issues. Does it mean that you have to stay away from it for life? No. The only way that we would absolutely take dairy out completely out of your life is if we looked at a food sensitivity test and it showed very, very high that you were extremely sensitive to dairy. So determining whether you should go dairy free and use alternative milks ultimately depends on how you feel consuming regular dairy. Then go slow and try out the alternative milks to see how you tolerate them. I do highly recommend to get the most nutrients out of your alternative milks making them at home. If you're interested in making your own alternative milks at home, I have some recipes on my website. I'm Dr. Janine Krauss. Thanks for watching.